are you as bullish as many people have started to be about Ethiopia? Um, I'd say I'm, I'm quite positive about the developments in the country. Um, this is in light of, um, you know, the big population that they have um, tapping into that will be, um, you know, key going forward for the country. Um, the, you know, double-digit growth going forward um, is also going in the next couple of years above. They're targeting around 11%. Mm -hmm. At current levels, we're looking at about 8%, which is very good, mm -hmm. uh, looking at the this global... This current growth, what is it predicated on? What are they doing? Um, it's basically on the back of the agri, agri, agricultural sector. There's a lot happening there, but there's also moves, you know, by the government to attract uh, a whole lot of FDI um, into the country, yeah. into a number of sectors, manufacturing, the power sector. But what's um, the, the key one at the moment is getting infrastructure um, up to speed in the country. So agriculture, big component of national activity at the moment. When they diversify the economy, Where's the potential that we're going to see in Ethiopia? Yeah, there's massive potential in, in the manufacturing sector. Um, this is obviously on the back of um, the population. Um, there's a large um, youth um, in the country, a youth population. Um, they'll tap into that. Um, you know, stuff that they are manufacturing is um, metals, chemicals, um, stuff in the construct construction sector. Um, you've also got your consumer goods, um, textiles, and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, there's very, very there's a lot of um, potential. As well, when an, uh, employment increases, there will be a buoyant uh, consumer uh, market in the country that is also going to start right. consuming. You talk about uh, a big drive to get FDI, particularly from India and China. Yeah. Many people, as we all know, are very wary of mm. Chinese investments in Africa mm. because they say that we're literally uh, ransoming our, our key natural resources for Chinese loans and concessions. Is it an unhealthy relationship, the way it's playing itself out in Ethiopia? Um, well, not at all from, from I mean, uh, reading what the government's plans are. Um, I mean, just last year, we, the country had about nine, according to the you know Ethiopian Investment Authority, 900 projects, and um, of those 900 projects, 72 percent were by foreigners, including Chinese. And we're talking about I mean two billion dollars worth of projects here. Yeah. So there's big money at stake, and it looks to be you know, obviously beneficial if they can get, especially the power sector, up to speed. Let's talk about that power sector because when we've seen the broad effects of the drought in Kenya recently, yeah. there was the option for them to try to buy energy from yeah. Ethiopia or connect to the Ethiopian yeah. grid. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's come of that uh, particular proposal, but there is a sense that this is where Ethiopia can really expand on its leverage in the region. They've got a lot of water from the Nile Basin and they could become the... Um, the regional yeah. electricity yeah. generator. Are they seeing themselves in that way? That is, that is absolutely the case. I mean, the World Bank, um, or rather, sorry, the African Development Bank has um, approved uh, $230 million just in December for that um, in the next uh, three years or so. Um, it, that should actually bring the country uh, almost uh, multiply the, the supply by four times from the current 2,000 megawatts of power to 10,000 megawatts um, of power by in about three years. That will literally power up um, Uganda, you know, Kenya as well, and, and the rest of the region, which is very, very positive, especially for manufacturing, if they want to go into that, and uh, mining, which also uses a lot of power. You spoke about the population size being critical for domestic consumption. What are we seeing on the labor front? What are we seeing in terms of job creation? What are we seeing in terms of the dynamism of the Ethiopian consumer? Um, that's, that's actually one of the key selling points in, in the fact that uh, the labor force, in, in, despite the fact that um, you know, there's a high illiteracy rate, but mm -hmm. um, you know, labor policy or labor legislation is such that it's conducive for, for, for foreign companies. Um, they can hire um, the local men and, and use them the way that, the way that they want. Mm -hmm. 50% of the population is in the agricultural sector and, and we can see the results of, of, of the, um, the productive labor in the agricultural sector's um, you know, productivity. Many people who are critical of Ethiopia say that it still operates very much like a police state, mm. that it's very bureaucratic mm. to set up a business takes mm. forever. So just dealing with that kind of red tape, are authorities showing a shift? Um, that is actually the, the economic or rather the policy shift is there. Um, the current government has got a 
good, rather good uh, enough track record thus far to show that they are addressing the issue. Um, part of what goes into the scores, say, in the World Bank's doing business, the ease of doing business index, is the fact that power is not there in the country, which is very, very important for, for doing business um, amongst other issues. That's what lets the country down. But I mean, going, going, going forward, yeah, we're going to see um, quite, quite a bit coming from improvements there. The geographical positioning of Ethiopia presents a lot of security risks. It's on the Horn of Africa. It's got Somalia on one side. Um, we know that they were embroiled in a long-standing war with a country like Eritrea. Yeah. Um, as we're looking for al-Qaeda militants that are penetrating the region, you know, they're right on the precipice yeah. there, Ethiopia. What does that mean for their development? Um, that is actually one of the key risks um, politically, the fact that um, a war might break out with the, in, the, in the border with um, Eritrea. What it mitigates that to some extent is its alignment with U.S. policy. They are using the country as an anchor in, um, you know, the Horn of Africa, assisting them um, uh, in that regard. On top of all of that, um, there is obviously scope for them to coach them on how to um, get, um, you know, the political system more liberalized over time mm -hmm. because of um, trade agreements that might um, come from a relationship with the U.S. Um, internally, well, you know, you know, ethnic uh, divides still prevail, and that is somewhat of a risk going forward. Um, one would obviously have to see how. The government um, does in the next 20, 2015, uh, 2013 elections. Okay.